Hey, this is Kagene, the author of Magnificent Woman Bringing Back Ancient Wisdom for a Modern World. And today I am joined by author of Star Lady. And medium who has studied a lot about indigenous culture, especially in Australia. So welcome, Valerie Barrow. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Yes, so you. yes, we're talking to a million people out there looking for <laughs> this kind of information, and we're very happy to have you on board. Thank you. Uh, so today, today we'd like you to share with us about Uluru. What What would you like to share with us about Uluru? If you haven't been to Uluru, it's just one of those spiritual sites or a sacred site. So a lot of people say there's something mystical about it. But for the indigenous people, they have um, a lot of, of what they call the secret stories of what they believed Uluru is. And these are the stories that were passed on by their ancestors. And today we will be very fortunate to hear from Valerie, who has spent a lot of years researching this and talking to elders, and she shares this with utmost respect uh, so that people who live on this land, well, you know, whether you are white or black, we can all have appreciation of one of the most longest lasting cultures on, on the earth, and that's the Aboriginal culture or the indigenous Australian culture. So welcome on board, Valerie. Thank you. Thank you, Katini. Thank you. Um, I would like to share that I actually had a sacred Alcaringa stone come to me. Um, it's a quite a long story and I what's, have written about it. What's an Alcaringa stone? Uh, the Alcaringa stone actually is what the indigenous or some of the indigenous people speak about. I think we've mentioned this. Um, it was actually Alcaringa who is known as a, an indigenous um, ancient ancestor, that's it. And he was, he is actually mentioned in the uh, Oxford Dictionary, the Australian edition, yeah. and one of the few words that, wow. um, that are the Aboriginal people in it. So uh, there's established there who he was and who he is. So he's very real, as it turned out. Um, I had this after Inga Stone, not relating it or understanding it at all, but it came to me and at another layer of consciousness that was meant to come, I had a mission. So I found myself holding the stone, which was wrapped in paper bark mm -hmm. and um, thin string and calico. And I knew it was men's business that I was not to open it. Wow. And I was a bit worried about how I'd be received if it went public. So for the moment, anyway, I was just asked to hold it. How, what did you feel when you held this? I was actually overtaken as I put it on my lap and I was overtaken with very bright white blue light. I can only say blue white light. And um, in it, it just lifted my consciousness so that I wasn't thinking with my brain. I wasn't thinking at all. Mm -hmm. And um, words just seemed to come to me. And even though it was just everyday life in some cases, they just flowed and I had been asked to record. So I was sitting there recording mm. and I had a session every day and I looked forward to it because mm. I didn't know what the next chapter was going to be yes. or about. So I was reading a book that I was writing in a way, but I actually didn't know what was coming next. Yes, because uh, you know what, Val, I've, I've read this book uh, and it's the, the Book of Love, which is from from what I gather, some of the information that there's no way you could have known, but it came to you as you held this stone. That's quite true. And that is quite true. And yeah. it's it's possible, like when you watch uh, stories of ancient civilizations who used to store memories in crystals and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so you're holding this special stone and whatever was stored in it is coming to you. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right, Katrini. Um, I would say that it came from the star people because, as I said, the indigenous people of Australia said that the Alcaringa stone um, came from the stars. So it was a messenger. 
and virtually yeah. they, that was what was given me to understand that I was a messenger also. I'd really love to show people this, um, where you can see the UFO. <laughs> that is yeah. Uluru. Yes. And you can see our indigenous and uh, indigenous ancestor there. And I say I share this with so much respect and well oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh when you talk of star people, just okay, please share with, with our viewers, those who may not have come across the idea of star people. Because you know, there are all these theories, you watch all these shows on TV, there are people trying to prove are there other people on this galaxy. But what yeah. we are finding with a lot of indigenous tribes, they already spoke of star people. They already spoke of whether they call them UFOs or whatever. Yeah. And they've got markings in caves. They've got, they left some messages to Absolutely. say there were yeah. these kind of beings who came to visit us. So we want to hear the story of what you mean about the star people, especially for the indigenous. Well, that's it. I haven't actually uh, had any interest in following i never watched the star wars which is so popular <laughs> um i had I did <laughs> i had started to i had started to channel and so i thought it, it was something in me that was holding me back from getting too involved with listening or reading anybody else talking about okay. star people yeah. i felt i needed to just find what was within me yes and the, the creator self. That's exactly right. The truth within. And, uh, and so in doing that, I was very glad I did do that because I didn't feel um, I was being influenced by anything else okay. that I may have read or heard. Sometimes you see something on television. Yes. And uh, I was hearing about uh, animal, man, looking human, all that sort of stuff. But I didn't yeah. really get involved with it at I all. Understand. It's just that I thought, well... That's what they've been talking about. That's what the staff people have been talking about yeah. to me. So um, before, I had initiation after initiation. Wonderful. Really. Before we go deep into this, because there are a lot of people who go like, oh, well, this is a lot of BS, so to speak, yes. lack of a better <laughs> word. There's yeah. a lot of people who are very skeptical. There are a lot of people who say, yeah, that's another conspiracy theory. Um, what would you like to say to such people and because because what what this is about is not to say take this this is the truth you know is to say consider yeah how many years have you thirty nine years, years it was exactly years. Right. you're saying thirty nine years I was curious enough to dedicate my entire life to learn more about this <laughs> and this is what I figured out and this is my legacy for the world yes that's true absolutely true yes what would you like to tell such people well um, when people are listening to the inner voice if you can say it that way it can be not necessarily a voice it can be clairaudient it can be anything connected to our senses but it's an inside sense. It's non-physical in any way. So it's so different from eyes. the physical senses. Yeah, we have eyes and yeah. we have an inner eye, which we have the brain. Yes. yes. So we have hear, hearing, yes. hearing, but we have an inner hearing too with some people. They call it clear audience, which I am very much so, the blessing. And then the other senses, of course, there's the touch. Mm. that when you touch something it reacts and it feels well that's mm. you know if you just touch something not everybody reacts but yeah. some people do yes and that's another aspect to touching and the same as sensing or feeling or what other senses are that we have sense so what i'm getting senses, is we have the external senses but we also have internal senses exactly All yes right. exactly well, and it's interesting i think there are about seven known ones Yes. There's probably many more, but yeah. so um, we are talking about the inner ones. Yes, the inner ones, and and then we talk about rainbows, which are yeah. you can't put your finger on a rainbow, but yeah. it's there, and there's seven colours. Because what I think the, the indigenous people of because they had to live, you know, so intuitively on the land, they have developed those inner senses yeah. that most people have. Everybody has it. Yeah. It's just a matter yes. of being aware and taking notice. And then when you start to accept that it's yes. real, yes. then you can develop it, your, your uh, yes. connection to it. Yes, yes. I, I get what you mean. But what I was trying to get at, they, did an, they were saying how with some of these ancient tribes, they have a larger pineal gland than people who don't use it. 
the uh, the indigenous people yes yes you know so, so what i was getting at is is how because they had to live on the land and they had to use more intuition for hunting and gathering although all humans came from that but they're not too far removed from living in most, that environment yeah. yes when right. i look when i look like my grandmother in kenya she lived from a place of knowing yes. because they never had to they'd never had to read yet yes. you know they yes. but, but they knew things yes absolutely so yeah. th that side of them and their intuition was way overdeveloped than somebody who has the education but that's another balance yes that's exactly right yes all right and of course you said the word intuition of course that means inside teaching Ah, so that. But yes, yes, yes. <laughs> In a intuition, yes. right? Yes. That's one of the ones that a lot of people can relate to. Yes. Um, so that's a lot of their, their, their knowledge was passed on through stories. That's right. And yes. song, because yes. everything was intuition. They can't say where it came from, but it was an inner knowing. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Well, uh, as I said, we had a lovely friend, a Jerry, Uncle Jerry, we called him, and he was uh, a an healer, indigenous, indigenous man. man. Yeah. And he, um, he showed us and taught us a lot about the customs and the culture. And they knew, I've repeated this before, but they, they knew when the storyteller, uh, the baby was born and that child was going to be the storyteller. Well, that wow. meant that there was a lot of training and in passage, what do you call it? Uh, Initiations? Passage. Rites of passage. The, yes, rites of passage, sorry. Rites of passage and um, all these things that that, child had to go through yeah. to eventually become meditating and connecting to other worlds and so they were introduced to their ancestors wow. and uncle jerry said as a child he was sitting around the campfire with his grandmother who was living with her at the time and um, he said there were these very very intelligent very dignified ancestors sitting there talking and teaching him things about healing wow. and also crystals. He said that in their um, tribe, the Bundjalung tribe, they had used crystals since forever yeah. to heal. Yeah. So um, then it was only when he was older um, and adult that he realized and talking to his grandmother that the teachers were actually spirit people. That's they amazing. weren't even in an earth body. They were just... <laughs> <laughs> and he was thinking and talking and believing he was talking to fellow humans, you know, fellow tribe people, but they weren't, they weren't there. So That's that was amazing. interesting. Yes, that was very interesting. <laughs> it's, it's like a child with other imaginary friends, but this is on another level. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I love, I love that story you've shared and you reminded me of, um, our time I was in Byron and that's when I came to start being inquisitive about the Aboriginal stories yeah. and I'd met a woman who was doing, um, it was, it was called blue flame dreaming and it, it was a ceremony. And anyway, she came to me afterward and she looked at me and she said, Oh, can I give you a hug? I said, <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> but I kid you not, Valerie, this woman hugged me. I felt an electric shock in like yes. she, I just felt this rush of electric current through my body. And then she looked at me in the eye, like, like I've done nothing pretty yeah. much. But I remember looking at her and I was like, wow, I felt activated. Yeah. Could be, because as you know, I work as a healer and yeah. I understand how energy works, but that was like an attunement yes, exactly. in, a, in a hug, in a split sentence. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, people don't understand how powerful the Aboriginal no. people are. No, that's right. And what was fascinating, the next time I saw her, she looked at me and said, you're dreaming now. <laughs> I'll see you in dream time. <laughs> like, what? I love like, it. We are meeting, we, there's a meeting tonight, <laughs> get on the soul train. I'm like, what? <laughs> Anyway, but that's how I started. Yeah, and yeah. right now, I've got so much respect for that culture. Yeah. And everywhere I go in Australia, I always have a kookaburra with me. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Because I relate to um, a kookaburra as one of my special teachers from Mother World. Yeah. <laughs> he always shows up and sits there on the branch yeah. looking straight at me. And of course, we people say oh, those who don't know, know kookaburra is a very special australian it laughs bird. A lot. it laughs a lot and it laughs a lot <laughs> but yeah. uh, they'll say you look at your eyes and people say without thinking 
that they're the windows of the soul. Well, I love and, that. And you didn't know that one? No, I well, knew that, but I love that. Yes. I well, love your soul, just in case you're wondering. I love your soul. <laughs> Thanks, I love yours too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it is, that's how sometimes we meet people. We just look at them. And of course, what we're not realizing half the time is that we're looking at their eyes and that is speaking to us. Yeah. I know you, even though they're not conscious of saying that yes. and you're not conscious of receiving it yes. until you start working with your own dreaming, yeah. which is that, that very thing I'm talking about, connecting mm -hmm. to the soul consciousness, which is in some ways known as dreaming, yeah. but you can daydream and meditate. It's a similar thing. It's the wow. same layer of consciousness that's within us wow. that we are coming to a point where we can't remember so well, but we can experience and just re feel it wow. and know it. You look at somebody and you'll know you really like this person, yeah. or you can look at them and think, this is a person I need to be a bit careful about. <laughs> and I don't know why, <laughs> I just feel it. But the thing is I not to it. focus on negative stuff at it's all. The, yeah. Because look, we're here to yeah. help all people, and different people are at different layers of consciousness. That's simple. People are learning. So you're a beautiful lady that you met in the indigenous yes. medicine. She, she, you could call her in another indigenous way, a medicine, a medicine woman, woman. But she's coming from that same place. Yes. Indigenous Australians are so ancient. They're the first people. So they describe things a little bit differently. They know things that are not yeah. in books. They're extraordinary. I wanted to ask you, when was the first time did you have the contact with the Aboriginal ancestors? What I'm trying to say, when's the first time you connected with the land? And what are, the reason I say this, I remember my first experience. Yeah. yeah. And I was living up in Karatha, and Karatha is a very ancient land. It's, yes, it's it like it's, someone said to me, it's, it's like Western Australia has light underneath. It's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a very special well, it is. It does. <laughs> it's a very yes. special place. I felt yes. very, uh, I don't know, very connected there. Yes, that's right. Yes. And uh, what had happened, uh, I'd gone with a, an Aboriginal friend of mine, and there's a place near, near Dampia, where uh, it's called Hearson School, and they've got a lot of ancient Aboriginal art on rocks. And like, when you look how it's drawn, you're like, what tools did I use to do this? And it's lived there for centuries. Anyway, so I'm, I'm there with a friend of mine and I've been told next time you go into nature, um, this is what they do, they're like, and blow in the air and introduce yourself to the land and say, hey, I come in peace. Please. Exactly, yeah. They introduce yourself like you like you only walk into somebody's house. Yes. You knock the door. It's the yes. same thing you do in nature. Yes, absolutely. So yes. I, had, I had spent enough time with Aboriginal people to learn this. And I had so much respect for the land and their culture. So anyway, I walked to this sacred site with art. And some people see the rock art. Some people are not shown. Yes. That's interesting yes, as well. Yeah, that is interesting. Yes. And, and I said, please send me a sign. I'll understand that you're on the land and the ancestors are real. Right? And I kid you not, so we walk, I'm like, yeah, I don't think this thing works. <laughs> yeah, this thing is not real. And we're just about to walk back. I kid you not, I see the largest python I've ever seen in my life. And it's just laying there. It's not like I want to harm you. It was just saying, okay, you've called us, we are here. And I'm so freaked out, I jump out of my skin. I'm calling my friend, I've thrown everything everywhere. And I'm like, oh my God, it's real. So I was like, all right, all right, that just frightened me. I was like, just send me small birds first. Just if people send me a few birds, I'll be fine, you know? Like, I guess I'll say, okay. So when I was about to leave Karatha, I, I decided, all right, now I'll go. There's a place where they've erected all these statues where the sun meets the water in the morning and it's rising and they've got the ancestors honoring on the hill in Karatha. Yeah, yeah. they do. And so I decided, I was like, okay, this time I'll just go and say thank you to the land. And I'll say thank you for watching over me. Thank you for guiding and supporting me. This will make many years I've lived here. And I kid you not, and this was on top of a hill and I was there. And seven birds came and they all started dancing and singing in a pattern. And I felt this energy rush through me that I just fell down on my knees and wept. Uh, yes, yes. And I, just, I and I just said, oh my God, you are real. And I felt them and I saw them and I, I knew it. Yes, yes. And I felt this love, like 
we've always been here. It's just you have to be open. Yeah. And and ever since then, I said, wow, what was the lesson? Is what was the lesson in this? I say, ask. If you need proof for anything and your mind is getting in the way, ask. And I asked, and that was the biggest response I ever got. So right now, without a shadow of a doubt, I do know they're real and I do know they exist. And everywhere I go, I honor them and acknowledge them. Yeah. That's lovely, Kajini. Yeah. And, and it doesn't surprise me. I, feel, I'm, I, I have heard not the same story, of course, but so similar. Mm. And um, it, it is, I have great respect for the Indigenous people and their old ways. And I feel very sad that some, so many have lost the old ways because of white man's way of doing things and it interferes. It doesn't, it's very hard to find a congenial way for it to be reconciled in some way. It can, but the question is how can you do it in a way people will understand? I'll give you an example, then maybe you can see this. I was in Coffs Harbour not too long ago and they have a sacred site. It's, it's Coffs Harbour Jetty. It's known as the Moon Place. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also honored. It's on it's written sacred site, Moon Place, da da da. And people go hiking five in the morning. It's, and you'll see the whales. It's the most magical place. Yeah. Even before we left Coffs Harbor, we just had to go to say <laughs> thank you, whales, and the whales came and we're like, Oh my god. You know? <laughs> it just blows you away. Yeah. It's so real. And I remember when I had to go in there, because I know how to honor the ancestors, I greeted the place, I honored the place. I, you, you cleanse yourself before you, you know, whether you do it with thought or what, you have to think of, I'm not taking anything, whether it's in my thoughts, my emotions, my negativity, because I've been, you know, God knows what's been going on at home or at work. You have to know, I have to cleanse myself if I walk into a sacred site. And then so by the time you go there, you'll have an experience or what we call a blessing. And I learned that in Kenya, the sacred site where my ancestors used to go. And a lot, what people, somebody said, many people go up the mountain, very few live with a blessing. So what I see is people just go jogging, some are on their phones. So they are so disconnected from the land. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, then I was thinking, maybe it's now starting to teach people these things. So they, they know this is what you, this is the right way to honor it. Cleanse yourself, yeah. acknowledge it. Don't carry your phone, right? And be present. Yes. Be present. Maybe you'll see a whale that just wants to say hi to you. Then feel, feel how you're feeling when you get off the mountain, because that's your blessing. Yes. And because this information has not been shared, and that's your responsibility and the yeah. <laughs> and people like me who know this, yeah. either yeah. way, it's not about whether people will believe it or not. It's about it needs to be shared. Yes, exactly. Then that's where we yeah. think we'll start bridging the gap. And when yeah. people will start having their personal experience, and I love what you say, it has to be a personal experience. I feel more people will be open to the old ways. Yes. Definitely, definitely, because it is a matter of just remembering because we all have that knowledge in us. Jerry, Uncle Jerry used to say um, that there was um, indigenous um, DNA in every human on earth, the indigenous Australian DNA, like we talked about. And I believe that. I, I truly believe that. However, whether you believe it or not, there is a part of us that connects and a knowing and there is also an aspect of us that just knows when it feels right and honour and respect. These are the big things that even with people that don't agree with anything other than another said, we need to respect that difference. Yes. Quite often we speak and then we find we've used different words, but when you really get into it, mm. we're talking about the same thing. And so we need to be very careful. We don't react with an emotional yes. reaction yes. to something somebody's saying when it's actually not far from our own understanding either. That's yeah. very true. And um, like, for example, I look back and I'm like, even though you look at the King Arthur, they venerated their ancestors. I really have never found one culture, even the Celtics, the Scottish, the Vikings, they all venerated their ancestors. So I say to people, it is a global thing. Yes. Just because some people have forgotten doesn't make the one to remember wrong. No, sure. And then when somebody will say to me, but I'm a Catholic, I'm like, but you <laughs> venerate saints, don't <laughs> you? Saints yeah. are dead people. They're, well, they're not dead, you know what I mean? Yeah. They've crossed over yeah. and you have to be aware. 
it's the same system. Yes, that's it's right. what is is yeah. um, very almost as you said native to us. But I want to hear about your most bizarre experience, so to speak, an experience you'd love to share with us in any of this bizarre. Oh dear, the one that blew you out of the water. <laughs> I know there are many of those, just one. You're having, you're having, you're putting me in a place, you know, because I've had so, so many experiences that I quite understand and accept that there are beings um, beyond our physical eyes. Which is the one that made, that made you and, like, and that's right. Yes, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. But there's been so many, and it's happened so often, so many bizarre things that I think... Um, I just laugh. I just keep laughing all the time because they're working to help me on my specific mission. Mm -hmm. But then other people are doing, I'm not the only one, far from it. Yeah. And that was another thing too. Another time you asked me something and I was thinking about, oh, I know about the star people. Um, hang on, I'll just get it right. The, the, um, no, I've lost it. I'm so sorry. I've just lost it now because I was going to say, I think we'll, gone, get, we'll, get, we'll get that to yeah. that because what, what we're trying to talk about is your experiences. We wanted you to share with us an experience you've had. Yes, one well, that you'd love to share. Yes, I'm done. I'm just trying to get Alteringa to prompt me with one. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, I mean, well, for instance, this book. But you, okay, how about when you've, you've been to Uluru? Yes, I've been to Uluru. Well, any, um, any experience you had there that you'd like to share? Um, Yes, I had my car keys once take, taken. I just lost them. I don't know what happened to them. And I was with a group of people. That was when we first went there, mm -hmm. when we were, when I was still working on this sacred stone. Yeah. And uh, so I went to, um, uh, I couldn't find my car keys. Yeah. And uh, I was quite cranky with myself, wondering what news I'd done and the people we were talking to. Anyway, I just said, look, just leave me, I'll go back to the information centre that's near Uluru. I'm out of Lefton there. Mm. Well, to get there, I would have had to walk through, shall we say, the shadow of Uluru itself, mm. which was extremely high when you get close to it. And then um, it was just no one there, although it was called the uh, Uluru, um, what can I say, place to walk, like a walking place. And Uluru means, uh, in their, their language, it meant um, snake. I, so I walked along and I was cranky with myself and I was really getting cranky for some reason. It was too ridiculous. So when I looked back, it was sort of like releasing something. Yeah. And it was like a snake would release its old shed, shed, yeah. shed its, skin. Uh, its tentacle. Well, no, 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 its skin. <laughs> Take its old skin, and I, that, in a way, I was sort of thinking along those lines. And then suddenly, I had this being right beside me. Couldn't see him. Wasn't quite as tall as me, and having trouble keep up with me with my strident ways, which I was so cranky with myself, yeah. which was ridiculous. It was just no reason for me to be so cranky. Yeah. And I was obviously releasing a whole yeah. lot of other stuff. Yeah. This is why that Uluru is so sacred because yes. people are touched by it, regardless of whether they're realizing it or yeah. not. Yes. And, um, and they come away uplifted yeah. in consciousness. Yeah. So with um, as I was talking, and it turned out to be our dream. <laughs> oh, he happened to be there. He, yeah. Well, he because he resides there. So he was there, and he was just telling me at the time, he did introduce me later with the stone wow. that I actually um, um, had a relationship with, like his connection to me in a deep wow. way. But he introduced himself through two other mediums that had come to the house and they were sharing and they were taking messages from Alteringa yeah. each. And yeah. the two of them were sort of sharing the same message. It was quite extraordinary, really. Yeah. But it was all for me. He yeah. wanted me to know about he, him. He was validating it for you or yes, confirmation, exactly. giving your confirmation. Yes, and that was another little point. I'll go back about the star people. Yeah. Um, when I did hear other mediums talking about similar things that I had been given without mm -hmm. any influence at all, yes. it reaffirmed for me and gave me a lift. I think, well, no, I'm not just imagining this. There's others, <laughs> that, <laughs> others yes. that know all this as well, you know. Yes. Uh, so getting back to this particular time yeah. with the... Uh, me being introduced to Alteringa, mm. he, um, uh, he um, 
we had lit a candle on a table, glass table like this. Mm -hmm. It was a big fat candle to mm -hmm. do the meditation. Mm -hmm. And they were speaking from the, uh, the, the beings of light from, yes, the being, the council of light, that was it. Mm -hmm. And um, so when he gave all the message, and I've written it actually in a book, can't just remember it at the moment, but it was saying virtually, as I, when I looked back and saw the message, it was in symbolic way. But what it was saying was that Uluru was, had come from the stars, yeah. as a lot of the old people had said. Okay. But it came from the stars and it was an asteroid with a trail behind it. Because at the same time, NASA was looking with the astronomers at mm. Jupiter, which was going to be hit with a trail of asteroids and, and uh, comets. Yeah. At that same time, yes. this is cycle within cycle within cycle, right? Yeah, wow. This is what happened. And um, they were all terribly excited because it actually happened and they viewed it. A shoemaker was behind it, a Mr. an astronomer called yeah. Shoemaker. And um, they actually saw the big impact crater that was created from Earth. Yes. So far away, they could see it, it was so big. So he was telling us, or telling me mm -hmm. um, when I was holding the stern, that it was an asteroid and it had come with others behind it. It had come as a fiery ball and that it had created a huge impact crater. Well, it didn't look like that now, although it's all sand, it's all very heavy, not just sand like the Sahara mm -hmm. Desert, not like that at all. It's actually quite hard ground, but yes. it's still desert. I don't think anything had grow on it really. Yeah. But, Anyway, so that was the most extraordinary thing because I then found that, yes, the indigenous clever people that had gone through all these initiations were saying the same thing, that Uluru had come from the stars. I got Not so many saying it now yes. because um, there's been scientists that say that it is not an asteroid. But then Alteringo yeah. has set, set with me Yep. and given me insight with clues for a yeah. scientist that would like to talk to me. And, and I remember the visions he gave me also yeah. was real clues. And I could see, yes, of course it is. That's and good. so, um, yes, is, it's in that story. That is amazing. There. What I would recommend, uh, guys, grab yourself this copy of this book. And well, it's read actually in this one now. It's as well. chapter, yep. it's part two. All right. And also <laughs> there's a Star Lady book. But, uh, yeah, if you want to know what the Alteringa Stone's messages were. And at the end of the day, you can make up your own mind. Uh, we're not here to coerce you in anything. But uh, one of my favorite sayings is, free will is to be surrounded by water and choosing to die of thirst. This is Kageni and Valerie. <laughs>